I find writing so hard, I really do. I can't imagine anything more difficult. Drawing is a lot more fun because you see the results quickly. And you usually don't fool yourself when you're drawing or painting. Whereas in writing, and his writing's very artificial, you're, you're taking sounds and converting them to symbols on a page and hoping that this combination of visual symbols, which is really auditory in origin, uh, are going to resonate with some unknown reader. Um, as a result, you can, it's easy to fool yourself. And many of the time I've gone to bed at night in high spirits thinking I've written just, just fabulous stuff during the day. And I wake up in the morning and look at it and I say, oh my God, what was I, what was I thinking? I don't feel any terrific uh, vanity about um, what I write. I mean, I can, um, I think I can take criticism much more easily in what I write. Um, but if, you know, if somebody tells me that the drawings are awful, well, no, few people will tell you that. Um, that would be much more crushing. When I was very young, five, six, seven years old, um, I decided that I wanted to be either a writer or an artist. And my mother encouraged me a lot in art. Um, my father was at that, who was a scientist, was editing a magazine called The Southern Planter. And every week he would write an editorial or something uh, for the magazine. And I thought that was quite magical. I see him at home writing on his yellow legal pads. And so these two things were sort of going, mm, going back and forth. I learned anatomy by drawing boxers in Ring magazine. You get pretty good, except for the hands, <laughs> pretty good anatomical drawings. And then I became a, a fiend about hands. And to this day, I cannot respect an artist who can't do hands. Obviously, this is what I keep noticing what people do. And so I love to have complicated hands in my drawings, hands that are like this or like this or the, the hand is turned. I just think of it as a, as a test. And oh, you should see the number of artists who avoid showing hands. I mean, good artists, terrific artists, because uh, they just can't deal with it. The greatest artists who ever lived, and just the greatest caricatures, uh, are the artists who worked for Simplicissimus magazine in Germany. Simplicissimus was a satirical magazine that dwelt very little on politics. Almost all of it was social. It would have drawings of uh, the nobility and the military, styles of sexual approach. I mean, it was, but it was, it was all uh, it was all social. Uh, and when I first came upon their work, which was in a library in by, just by accident in Springfield, Massachusetts, I was electrified. Um, I'd never seen any caricature of that much skill at that time in the late 19th century. When all caricatures came out of fine art. To make a living, they would do caricature. Well, they were trained in anatomy. They were trained in perspective, in doing interiors of rooms, doing landscapes. They had all these great technical s skills, uh, which so many caricatures today don't have. My first published drawings uh, came when I was a newspaper reporter and was sent to cover a murder trial in Springfield, Massachusetts. And <clears throat> I decided that I would also do the courtroom drawings. Um, so I, I, I did, and it, it nearly drove me out of my mind because when I was drawing, I could not listen to anything. I couldn't absorb anything that's being said. And by the same token, if I was listening, I couldn't do any, I couldn't do any drawing. There has been a, a bit of journalism in, in most of it. And most of it has been done for, for uh, to be printed. For four years, I did drawings for Harper's Magazine each month. They were all to make a, um, a point. For example, I noticed how sanctimonious joggers were becoming. I mean, they, joggers felt like they were a, a, a sort of super species of of, uh, of, of human who didn't fall for junk food, decadent life of everybody else. And so th out of that idea, 
And I did a thing called the Jagas Prayer. I've really never done a drawing to go after anybody. It just comes out. It just comes out the way it comes out. <laughs> when I was in my twenties, I think for the most part I was a better artist than I was a um, a writer. I was just starting to to write, <clears throat> and I was I was thirty five before my first book was was published. By then, I think. Uh, I wasn't bad as a uh, as a writer. It has turned out that the, the process has been very similar in, in both the fiction and the nonfiction. Um, I've done two novels. I'm working on a third. <clears throat> They've all been based on a, a lot of reporting about things that um, I didn't know about. Um, Wall Street it was just an abstraction to me. Uh, Bonfire of the Vanities or Real estate development in a man in full, I knew nothing about it. I suppose, I say in my case, uh, a certain way of looking at, <clears throat> at uh, people or the world uh, might end up in both what I write and what I, <clears throat> what I draw. Um, but I don't think of any cross-fertilization. In other words, it, it's a, it's, the tree of evolution, <laughs> one goes, branch goes this way and one goes the other. The scene today is just wonderful. I mean, 86th Street and Lexington Avenue in New York is one of the great crossroads of the world. At that intersection, I mean, you see every type of human there is. I would love to do a, a complex picture in the way that Bruegel was uh, complex of just people at that intersection.